Welcome to another Sunday Extra podcast with Hope Church. My name is Brian Krop. I'm one of the associate pastors here. I am joined with uh, by our with ba- all the prepositions uh, with our lead pastor Matt Sturdivant. Uh, we have been in a series, a three week series leading up to Easter, which save the date, it's April 4th is when Easter is, but we've been leading up to that with a a series on Jesus, looking at these uh, roles that he has as Messiah, Savior, and Lord, specifically this week looking at Jesus as our Savior. If you uh, watched our uh, service on Sunday online or you were at our in-person service Uh, We took several laps around the same idea at increasing depths of information. Um, Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming that there was possibly a fifth or a sixth or a tenth lap we could have (laughs) gone. There's just it just it's a very complex uh, act of salvation and process of salvation. So I'm just going to go on a limb with all that you hit us with on Sunday, that there is still more that you could have said but didn't. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Yes. What, what would some of that, if you, if you could have extended the service time just by another 10, 15 minutes, what also would you have uh, let us know about? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I, I think where I want to start answering your question, I have something very specific I want to talk about, but you know, that message from Sunday was not like a lot of the messages that we, you know, maybe typically do. And I, I tried to set that up a little bit, not apologizing for it, but just so people could understand the, the, the difference. We, we focus a lot on application mm-hmm. and just like, how is this going to help me walk with Jesus better today, which is really where we live. But one of the things that I have grown increasingly uh, concerned about uh, particularly over this last, you know, year, um, it is just the the question or the value of of Jesus. Uh, who is he? What did he do? What does it mean? Um, a lot of people like to, you know, say Jesus was a great guy, was a nice guy, but you know, and and then we also have um, an increasingly amount of either progressive or liberal Christianity that wants to essentially throw out the Bible and, and, you know, sort of we can feel what we feel about. So it takes this post-truth idea and layers it on top of Christianity. But Jesus said he is the way, the truth, and the life. And then uh, even, um, you know, it's sort of a big deal right now, this wokeism, this mm-hmm. idea that I have to keep paying penance is essentially what it is. Um, and Jesus is enough. I mean, it's, it's just... I, I, so I wanted people um, to know what they know and what mm-hmm. they've been living, but actually understand all that's going on behind the scenes. So that's why we took that that layered approach, as as you mentioned. Well, uh, I, and you know, we do, and a lot of the messages we're focusing on. Okay, so how does this practically affect my life, my family, my job, that kind of stuff? But I think, you know, for me, the 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 practical application out of uh, what you shared on Sunday was that I can go into the week and have assurance that Jesus is enough and that I am a part of his family and that I don't have it all together right now. I've got my problems and um, there is still sickness and there is still evil in the world. and There's all that stuff. Um, But God has me in his family and he has me a part of his kingdom, and that he is working on me. Uh, I think that diagram of the ever-growing uh, new life, um, that I'm becoming like him in character as I'm walking in obedience to him, and that I can face tomorrow and all of the challenges that are out there in the culture, knowing that God is enough, I'm with him, and that ultimately... Uh, there is that glorification and there is that, you know, union with God in heaven eternally and that a lot of the the junk of this world is going to pass. Um, either when I die, I'm not going to worry about it anymore, or, um, you know, should he return before all of that, then all of this world goes away too. So, I, you know, I... I it's a different kind of application than what we would normally do, but I, I really appreciated the reminder yeah, I don't I, I, I don't recommend um, necessarily you know 
talking about uh, uh, sanctification and glorification and all of that <laughs> when you're trying to share the gospel for the very first time mm -hmm. with your neighbor, but we need to know what's going on behind mm -hmm. there. And that's one of the things, this is kind of a funny story. So this is one of the stories I, ch I chose not to tell this at the beginning about part of why we, we took this, this angle of things. So um, my whole life, one of the things that just what's been important to me is, is like the application, the doing, you know, mm -hmm. we, have, we have a knowledge scale, we have an application scale and, and, um, and the application scale is, is really what's important, but we're, we, we always have to know more than we're able to do, but we don't just want to know, no, 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 and not do anything about it. So when I was in college, um, you know, I, I was maybe like a little bit anti knowledge in some things because I had a lot of friends who were a part of this honors program that, you know, the Bible talks about knowledge puffing. Well, there were some arrogant people in this program and, and at a university? Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> and and they knew a lot, but then you look at some of their lives. Yeah. So um, I actually like became the president of this anti-club against, <laughs> it was an informal, it wasn't a real club. It was just a joke between some friends. But uh, so one of the things God has done in me though, talk about the, the new life and, and the, the process of growing. One of the things that he's done in me over the last 25 years uh, has been like, you need to know, and here's what you need to know. Here's why you need to know it, but then you need to live it. So, um, so really the people are at all different places spiritually. Some of what I said, I realized was maybe over the heads of some people that's okay. But particularly like you just says, I want people to know this is what actually happened. This is what act is happening. And this is what will happen so mm -hmm. that when the enemy uh, tries to bring in these thoughts of doubts and and guilt and shame and you know like well maybe I need no you don't need to do anything else like you are completely justified yeah. before God if you are a follower of Jesus if you could have done something else why did Jesus do what he did exactly yeah. so um, so anyway so that's kind of why we did that but but there's one particular I, I mentioned this in passing so this had to do with the the uh, the area where we were talking about uh, regeneration, the new life mm -hmm. coming in, and that that I mentioned Nicodemus, the Pharisee. Yep. So um, there's there's an interesting comparison if you take a look in, in the New Testament in the book of John. Uh, John chapter three is the story of Nicodemus. Well, John uh, chapter four, right after that, is the story of Jesus with the woman at the well. And you and you take these two stories, and I think that they're a, a great sort of study in the offer of salvation of, mm. of what God uh, does. So, you know, basically Nicodemus was, he was a Pharisee. He was this, like, he knew the law. He'd been living this good, righteous life. And, and, uh, and Jesus tells him, you need to be born again, which is basically like, it, it doesn't matter what all these things you have said, like none of that matters. You've got to be born again spiritually. Right. Um, well, the woman at the well, she was a woman who had a horrible reputation. Um, you you don't go to the well in the middle of the day unless you means you're an outcast, you're and you're ostracized from the community. So she's out there at the middle of the day because that's the reputation that she had. And Jesus is having this conversation with her, um, which it was it was scandalous basically for a male, but then a rabbi, a teacher, mm -hmm. to be communicating with a woman like this. Like that in and of itself was this huge thing, but Jesus came to sinners. He came to the people that he came to save. So they're having this discussion and, and he doesn't tell her that she needs to be born again. Like she probably would have been like, I get a do over, right? <laughs> but that's not the offer that she got. Um, he talked to her about the living water. Like she, she was having to go to the well to get water. And what he was basically talking about was having this life, this new life bubbling up inside of you, this, this living water. So he, he, he gives very different um, offers of salvation to these two people who are very different places of life. So one of them, the guy who looks like he's got it all together from the outside, who's basically perfect. Well, his main sin at that point was pride. It, and it's basically, is you can never be, uh, you, you can never be too good. You know, mm -hmm. is that it doesn't have to do with all of this. It has to do with, have you been born again? Like you, you've got to be regenerated. You've got to have this new life in you. And then, for her, 
um, she, she she represents that uh, you're never too lost and 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 too far gone and and too much of a sinner that Christ can't save you. So they're they're sort of at opposite ends of the spectrum, and it's just a it's just a really good like comparison looking at as Jesus as Savior. He he save he can save everyone. He can save those that think that they're righteous and they have it all together. Well, they still need to come to him, and and those that uh, who who know that they're not righteous and that they're like I don't even know if Jesus will look at me. You know, later on there's a Jesus is telling this story of um, we, again comparing and contrasting the Pharisees to this sinner who's like beating his chest, you know, and like have mercy on me. And it's like, well, he who's been forgiven a lot understands versus those that have been trying to live this righteous life. So, I mean, Jesus is our Savior. And this the, the thing is, is that we, we all start out as sinners. But Jesus, he paid the price. He did everything that needs to be done for us to be made right with God. What we have to do is we have to choose to become followers of him. We have to decide that we want to uh, repent. We talked. We talked about that on Sundays. Repenting is this changing, this this turning from my sin and my my sinful lifestyle. Um, the point is, we're not gonna. We're never gonna stop sinning on this side of eternity because there is still gonna be some of that old life around us. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, we get better at and we don't sin as much and we gain victory over things. But we're never gonna reach perfection on this side. So. You know, sometimes we, we like sometimes we we think like I should have been better than that. And on one hand, it's like, yeah, you should have. But on the other hand, you're 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 a human, you still have this mm-hmm. this layer of of the of the, the sin nature in you. And it's not until we die, until we will be fully like Christ. So again, it's just it's 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 helpful understanding the the more the, the background and what all is really going on so that we can fight the daily battles that we have. Mm-hmm. in life and against temptation. Well, you know, the, that diagram of the process of growth that you showed, um, you know, it's not like Jesus came along and offered this uh, product uh, called salvation, and we bought it, and then, you know, he's, he's off selling it to somebody else, and you've got to deal with customer service the rest of your life, <laughs> and you don't know how the thing works because it's a brand new, complicated thing uh that process is now he's with you the whole time and he's he didn't he didn't die for me and he didn't die for you um just to sort of get you out of hell um he wanted you in the family and he 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 wants he went after the people that he wanted and um if he if he went to those lengths to uh, reconcile us he's not gonna just see ya and and leave he's he's there to walk with along the way in that process of showing you know there there is this new life i think you said many times now i really like that definition of the gospel uh, you don't have to stay the way you are that there's so many things that we experience in our lives whether it's a self-help thing or a diet or whatever that says hey there could be transformation. You can transform your body. You can transform your outlook. You can transform all this kind of stuff. And then we trip over our shoelaces all the time uh, because we can't, we just can't do it. But Jesus really does offer genuine, for real transformation. And that's just so good. Yeah. And, And I think the thing too that You know, it's it's important not to oversell it in the sense that like it's not a perfect life, right? Like I don't have a perfect life right now. I I, I know you pretty well. I know you don't have a perfect life either. <laughs> um, so it's not after having a perfect, easy, best life now, right. which is again, which is one of the things where we have to know the truth. Yeah. You look at the history of God's people. Uh, one of the things we're going to talk about this next week. Um, or this this coming Sunday is the last one. Is Jesus is Lord? What does it mean that Jesus yeah. is Lord? And and it has to do with our ultimate allegiance to Him, and that we put Him and His priorities and His mission. We put all that first in our life. That's how we make our decisions. It's not that I I got saved and now I have this this great life. We can have a good life. Mm-hmm. I I have a good life. I have a joyful life. I still have hard things I have to walk through. And it's not going to be until we die and we spend eternity in heaven with him that we will completely 
receive our mm-hmm. reward. So it's, you know, it's not, if you become a follower of Jesus, you don't somehow you become wealthy, yeah. beautiful, and famous. It is our best life now, walking with Jesus is our best life now. It's just, it's a different definition of best. It's not the marketer's definition of best. It's not what um, social media would say is your best life. It's not what our uh, selfish, greedy hearts want to say is our best life. But walking with Jesus is the best life. It just may involve some hardship, like you're saying. It may, and we're again, we're we're fallen people, we get, so we're going to mess things up along the way yeah. too. And we really we get meaning and purpose. And here's the thing: is that in a in a Christian worldview. When you have an understanding of sin, all of the hard things that we go through actually make sense. Yep. Like, it makes sense. There's sin. What is sin? Sin is rebellion. Yep. All of the evil, ugly things that we see around us that we have capable. I mean, Jesus talks about that, like, it's what comes out of our heart, right? So, again, that goes mm-hmm. back to there's sin in us. We were born yep. sinners. And, and by having the Christian worldview and the message of the gospel... It all the pain and suffering actually makes sense. We may not understand it all in the moment on yep. this side of eternity, but it actually makes sense that there is sin and that there's an enemy, but there's a savior, and that's who Jesus is. There it is. We, we could do this for a long time. Just yeah. talk about how awesome Jesus is. That'd be really good. But I will save that until next Sunday when I would invite you who are watching or listening to this to join us for part three, which is the conclusion of our series on Jesus. It's Palm Sunday on Sunday, which means that the next Sunday is Easter. It's April 4 is Easter. Uh, I would invite you back to Hope Church uh, for Palm Sunday, but also for Easter. Uh, You can go to our website at hopechurch.com and find out all of the ways that uh, you can uh, worship with us and celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ Uh, with us on Easter Sunday. We've got stuff going on in person at our Beach Street location in Fort Worth, Texas. We're going to have a a great service online as well. So check that out. Also, uh, come back, invite somebody to join with you uh, for church uh, this Sunday as we wrap up the Jesus series. And between now and then, we would also invite you back uh, to join us for our next Sunday Extra podcast with Hope Church. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.